Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> greetings from Somerville. I am your host, Michael Somerville. And actually going to kick off uh, with a little story today that's going to lead us into our guest um, story about stand-up comedy. When I was a, a comedian just starting out, I he started doing the road for the first time, and it's the best thing ever. You're traveling around, you're telling jokes to strangers, they're giving you money. The whole thing is just such a wild thing to start doing. Um, it, it's just the most fun job ever. I was in, in Atlanta, one of my first road gigs, and after the show, uh, this really cool group came up. It was like four couples, just cool guys, the women were cool. They all had a great time at the show, and they said, we're going next door, we're going to get a drink, You want, can we buy you a drink? And I was like, this is, I'm in, I'm in entertainment, I've made it, this is the coolest thing ever. And I said, of course, I'll come over and join you. Not knowing at the time that going out for audience members after drinks, not always the best idea. And I was about to find out why. So I wrap up in the club and I go over to this bar next door and meet them. They're all at a big long table and they had drinks there. And they look up and they're beyond excited. Here's the comedian, here he is, he came, he joined us, here he is, sit down. And I sit at the end of this long table, all eight people sitting there. And literally, like, they just stopped whatever they were doing, laughing, talking, and just kind of looked down at me. And I'm kind of, like, smiling and nodding, and slowly but surely, they're kind of, like, waiting. And I realize now, <laughs> years later, or at the time even, that they expected me to continue the show, to be funny, to be on, to be... And they were kind of, like, sitting there staring at me. I just wanted to have a drink and chat and interact and get to know, you know, my job was done. I thought we were going to... And slowly but surely, so I ordered a drink, and slowly but surely, they kind of like, you know, said, how's it going? They were trying to pimp me into somehow being humorous, and I wasn't really taking the bait because I didn't know what they wanted from me. And the worst part about it is they started to get uncomfortable. They started to like look down, not really know what to do with me sitting there at the table, and I started getting uncomfortable. I thought we were just going to have like adult conversations, and finally, so I quickly sort of finished my beer, and it was quiet. I said, I, I guess uh, I guess I'm going to go, and then they, they were just so relieved. They were oh, they're okay, okay, yeah, yeah, take care of it. So anyway, forevermore, I've never forgotten that story that you generally don't go out with audience members after a show uh, because they expect that you just to be the entertainment. Not all. I'm sure there are, are people who wouldn't be like that, but uh, as a general rule. Which brings me to my guest today, my good friend Lauren. I call her my fun friend Lauren, my funny friend Lauren. Um, but the reason I tell that story is because it's not fair to introduce you this way and say, you're fun, you're funny, you're going to be... But now everyone's going, okay, well then she's going to be funny. Make, her, make us laugh. Entertain us, Lauren. Welcome, welcome to the studio. So now I'm really on the spot. Now, so <laughs> <laughs> now you have to be dance for us, monkey. I, I really every time you laugh at something I say, I thought you were just being nice. <laughs> no. Honestly, I just the reason you are here is because I've known you now for a little while, and you're always we, we always laugh, we always smile mm-hmm. when we see each other. And I was thinking about it. You you always say you smile, but the truth is you smirk. It's always like you <laughs> you're up to something that you know something. There's a yeah. There's yeah. always a little bit of a wry smile. And uh, we clicked instantly because of that. I have to be very careful yeah. all the time. <laughs> I'm sure I have to you know my audience. Uh, and you are yes, and being yeah. in customer service as you are, yes. I think yeah, you need to be <laughs> your, it's tough. your your sly little comments that I love. Uh, <laughs> I also, you have to keep yourself in check. I am yeah. sure. Um, no, I. Uh, that's the reason when I started doing this podcast, I said, my goodness, you know, I wanted to have you know fun, funny, entertaining people from all parts of my life. And you know, I thought of you instantly and said, well, I don't know. I, and I went up to you and said, can you? I don't even know what we're going to talk about because normally we go for a certain angle or a certain you know this person has this hobby in life or whatever they uh, but for you I was like I think you just need to be on and that's why you're on well I'll take it I'm, I'm honored <laughs> I think and uh, yeah like I'll do my best. You'll do, I, your I'll best. do my best. I, I'm definitely do you on the. Feel spot. like me at the end of the table. Uh, yeah, eight totally. Eight no, with no drinks. <laughs> no drinks. No. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> well, tell us a little more about you. Uh, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? And yes, yeah, so okay. start there. So I was originally. So I was born in New York City. New and, York City. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. On a beastly hot day, my mom makes sure that I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds you of every, that. Every time. It's, it was a disgusting day. <laughs> because For, of the weather. Right, right. Friends, you hear friends, their moms say, oh, it was such a wonderful day, the day you were born. And then my mom's like, it was beastly hot. <laughs> It was disgusting. It was the worst day ever. It was the worst. I was in July. Oh, my. And I don't, you know. In the city, though. In the city. In New York City. In New York City. In NYU. Yeah, okay. And then, and my parents lived in Long Island City. All right. And uh, then we moved out to Long Island, and I grew up there. I was out there from 
usually basically age four on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't remember too much of the city. Yeah, I don't remember that hot day that you. Came I don't remember that hot day, <laughs> but I am not. I'm always reminded of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. To this day. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at East Coast. She and- cut her hair short after that. I think actually. <laughs> Is that true? I think so. Now you sure grew up. At, you grew up in a funny family, uh, and I, I not on purpose funny. It <laughs> <laughs> just happened to be very funny. Well, your yeah. mom. I've heard you before talk about your mom. She sounds like an absolute character. She is. Yes. She is. <laughs> she is. Were you a funny family growing up? Like, where people make jokes around the table, or were you guys just characters without realizing it's, it? It's totally the the second. It's the latter. <laughs> characters without realizing it. Even uh, so, I went off to college, and my parents would come up and visit for various reasons. And I had, I had like a number system of friends wanting to go to breakfast or lunch with my parents. It was like an <laughs> entertainment thing. When are your parents coming up? Can I go next? <laughs> and I'm like, do you realize this is real life for me? This isn't funny for me. <laughs> this is not. Yes. This is. They get to be like a day player on a sitcom for the yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they somehow they put on a show, That's you know, it. and they know it, but they don't. They don't. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, but it's, no, I think it's I, fun. I know the type absolutely. To me, it's funny now, but growing up, it wasn't not as funny, funny at all. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> no, yeah. I, I know the feeling. I have, you know, I, not the same, but I, my dad. You know, everyone always wants. Oh, where's where's your dad? What's he up? Where's Hank? Where's, you know, what did the guy? That guy? Like, that I, you know, the, <laughs> right. the one from the, from my house? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. To, yeah you no. just want to hang out with them. Yeah. 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 I'm like that's what I'm afraid of. We don't, really. <laughs> you oh. don't get it. To be. So you grew up then East Coaster, mm-hmm. you're through high school, through, high through school, okay, yep, and were you yep. active, were you an athlete, were you... So, um, athletics and music were both really big. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So what did you do musically? Uh, I actually played the drums. Really? Yeah, I uh, not to get too back many at little. Your parents. Yes, I saw like um, one of those electronic drum sets, and I thought to myself, "Oh my God, my parents would have paid thousands <laughs> for this, uh, you know, thing that you can't hear." You can't hear it, right? It's right, a yes. only in, yeah. They but but they were so cool. They supported me with everything because um, obviously, you know, there weren't many girls playing the drums. Okay. Right, and they said, "Hey, cool, you know, go for it." I love. Um, you have siblings. I'm an older sister, okay. and she's an amazing trumpet player. She oh, played wow. the violin and the trumpet, and also not as many girls playing the trumpet, but sure. they're like, you, that's what you want to try? We'll, we'll get you lessons. So they were always really, really supportive. Didn't matter if it was in or out or not yeah, accepted. Yeah. So they're really, it really supportive. Nice. Yeah, okay. completely. Okay. So and, and, and then were you, were you good? I was pretty good, yeah. you know. Um, I played in the jazz band. I played in the bands. Really? And, okay. Yeah. No, I actually played here, too, on, on the ship. Oh, well, I love it. You Professionally or just for fun? Um, they, well, <laughs> both. I don't know. <laughs> Did they give you money and hire uh, they, you? Or? They sort of. Um, this was kind of funny. We They needed an extra drummer oh. one New Year's. Yeah. And they knew I could play, so they asked me to do it. And I they gave me a little extra something and... What was really funny is that we had our own band name called the Kukui Nuts. <laughs> and I said, I said, so we make people want to run out and go to the bathroom? And he said, what are you talking about? I said, Kukui Nuts are laxatives. Do you know that? Is that I did not yeah, know that. They're, they're Hawaiian laxatives. Oh, jeez. I mean, and he looked at me and he's like, well, that's what we are. So, you know, <laughs> that's our name. That's our name. <laughs> Let us be. All right. Yeah, so, yes, but, so I, can't, I, I can hold the beat and no one's going to be like... That drummer stinks, right, you know. Right. They're just gonna not notice me, they, and that's right. okay. Which is yeah. sort of the that's, job, that's right? Sort of the just job. be there, yeah. and is it the kind of thing you can just pick up, you know, years later and be okay? I can hang in. Yeah. You, you can. I think you can hold your own, but yeah. you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be taking solos, right. you know. Right. <laughs> you know, as you lose it. <laughs> yeah, everything's just going all over the place. But yeah, you can, you know, hold a four-four count. But <laughs> and how about yeah. now the sports side of things? Yeah. So. I pretty much tried whatever I could try, and my parents were also really cool. And we kind of narrowed things down on things that I wasn't fast enough or tall enough or I just got hurt all the time. <laughs> yeah, and, so you crossed them yeah, off. Yeah, we pretty much soccer. I mean, I was getting kicked all over. They said, you know what, maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then it sort of narrowed it to basketball and golf is what I ended up playing in high school. Okay. I wasn't very good at basketball, but I, again, hung in there and I had a lot of fun with it. And right. then golf I was. So... I'm not tall, I'm not fast, I'm not that strong, but I have good 
coordination. So okay. it ended up golf. It is working out. <laughs> I love you it. You know, and so um, and I was the only girl on the high school boys golf team. So that was. Very really? interesting. Yeah. yeah the yeah. only girl on the boys' high school golf team because there right. was no girls' there, team? There was no girls' team. Now that there is, so that's really wow. cool. So it was kind of like a stepping stone and so a starting wow. So, so was, yeah. oh, wow, that's and how did that even come about? Did you just say, I want to play golf and there's I'm so auditioning it, or <laughs> trying out? That's, that's an entertainer speaking, auditioning. Are you trying out or well, did your, your mom go in and, and have a talk with her? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't remember. The, she can get anything done. If you ask her, she she says, I moved to Long Island Expressway West, okay? <laughs> so she can do anything. But um, I I started playing because I was trying to get out of housework that my mom would make me do. Okay. So I'd follow my dad wherever it was, and a lot of times it was at the golf range. And so that's kind of how I got into it. And All then right. they realized I was actually pretty decent. Uh-huh. And, um, and then other people were kind of helping them say this is probably what you should have her do next or okay. you know you should try out for this team or you should look for lessons or whatever but this is kind of funny that my dad realized it was getting good he took one of his old like 1975 Wilson staff 500 pound club you know they're so heavy yeah. back then he cut it down put a grip on it and I took my first swing with it I took it back and I hit him right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned my first lesson of golf. Look behind you. Look behind I you. wasn't sure if anything would ever happen after that, but he got over it after and ice and whatever. But I hit him right in the head. You didn't cut it down method. far enough. No, huh? apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, how, yeah. that, that is a, it's a tricky game though of, of golf. Yeah. I, I actually yeah. did the very same thing. I hit my brother once in the head. <laughs> same exact thing. And he was so mad. He cut it open. It was Oof. bleeding, and he chased me around the course though. And while I was, he was torn, while he was bleeding. So I was torn between like scared for my life and, or helping him. And, but also looking back and wanting like we gotta do yeah, something. We gotta do something. Yeah, yeah, if you'd stop trying to kill me, we need we have <laughs> work. Blood flowing yeah. everywhere. <laughs> but then tell me about being then the only girl on an all boys team. Was that was it was it weird? Was it I mean were they welcoming? Was it because uh-huh. I mean nowadays we were talking about you know right. it's a more normal thing. But I sure. mean we're talking now a few a few years ago. It was a few. Yeah, it's a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Let's not quantify that right <laughs> Let's now. Let's not but. put a number on it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, they were really actually quite cool. I know that they didn't accept me into all their conversations, okay. but they never, you know, they did accept me as a teammate. And, okay. and it was really, yeah, they were actually really welcoming. That's really um, neat. Were you? Cons- and I think they were concerned, actually, a little bit. They, <laughs> you know, they didn't want me to beat them. You know, that was an issue. That's but it. And they were, were you good? Were you good? I you mean, know, eventually. With their scores? Yeah, I mean, by the time... You know, eventually I was... So I actually started there in eighth grade. I wasn't starting on the team, but I was part of the team. Okay. And then in, by the time I got to high school, I was starting maybe not number one, but maybe number six. And then, yeah, I, I you know, eventually got up there. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And so held, yeah. held my own, for I, sure. I love it. And did yeah. you compl- continue to play golf then after high school? Or? Yeah, I went to college, but it was girls. Okay. I played, uh, oh, played against, in college as well? Played in college, but against other girls. So okay. That, where they were actual teams. Oh, okay. <laughs> with girls on them, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was... It was it was a lot of fun. Okay. Everyone was super. Any more super cool. mishaps at all between after your first swing ever with uh, hitting your hitting your dad in the head? Countless. And, countless mishaps. <laughs> Tell us what yeah. you, was your favorite. Uh, what, what have you done golf wise? Oh, Aaron oh. shots. Aaron. Oh, Aaron shots. Yeah. Well, I think any golfer would, could. You know, it's hard to I, count them. That's all I hit. That's, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so so I used to work at a country club. Right. And. After a while working there, they did give me some playing privileges, but after hours. So I so I was practicing, and I'm on one of the holes, and I hit it in the sand trap, okay? And this hole happened to be near uh, the parking lot, okay. okay? And so there was sand traps, the green, then the parking lot. Well, I, I'm hitting it out of the sand trap, and I hit it so clean that I hit it clean over the green, over the fence, over the trees, and into the parking into lot. Into the parking lot. Into the parking and lot. And there's cars out there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not only just cars. These are nice cars. Like, oh, not like the, the car I was driving club, right. over, you know. So, you know, or Rolls Royce, Bentley, oh, Mercedes. My. So oh, I'm just waiting for a crash, right. screams, alarms. I'm waiting, and, and it didn't happen. But... I don't know. I mean, I'm scared. You're panicked. I'm panicked. So I totally panicked, and I literally buried myself in the sand trap. Like, 
<laughs> in there. In the trap, like in the sand. Just to hide from. I was hiding because I didn't know who was going <laughs> to come after me. Out. They all they had to do was just run around the you little. You burned yourself I burned into the myself sand trap. On, on number seven <laughs> sand trap in front of the green, and I stayed there for at least. I mean, it was under ten minutes, but I, I like did a snow angel and kind of just lied under I the lied sand trap. Under the, yeah, no, was, was anyone go- playing behind you? No. No, I was alone because so that's what would be really easy to. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I I was mortified. Not only of a bad shot, but then I could have just totally broken somebody's windshield in the process. What was it the ostrich that hides in the sand, puts the head in the sand? Isn't that the old fable or whatever? <laughs> Not the fable. I, the I think fable they really that do. they do that. I think they really do that. You. Oh yeah, my goodness! So I, and how did that end? How did you, you were hiding in the sand? Well, I didn't. The I, sand. I, I eventually, I didn't hear any screams, noise, Probably running. Didn't hear I didn't hear anything. Oh, yeah, right? I was so... I said, okay, it's time. Right. My mom's probably wanting me to call and have get picked up. So I look at my watch. I'm like, maybe it's time to get out of the sand, you know, and and face face whatever music's going to come to me. So I get out, and and, uh, I call my parents, and someone's on their way, and I sit at the bench in front of the country club. And this guy from valet, like right before my mom shows up, comes over and shows me a golf ball. He's like, is this yours? You know, with this smirk, I said, yeah, thank you. Thanks. It yeah, it was totally my golf uh, ball. Uh, but I think I might have asked him, did it hit anything? And yeah, yeah it, it didn't. I just got no. really lucky, but. Yeah. And did you rake the trap after the sand I, trap? I'm sure. I'm <laughs> it sure. left it right. Yeah. That's, it was a caddy, you know, you're trained to that do is. that. Now you're doing, are you working there at the time? This is in college or out of college? This, this was point? in high school, oh, so starting at age school. like 13, 14. Oh, that's hysterical. Up until probably my junior year of college. I, okay. I so did you were work playing there. on the team and working at a golf club. Over the summer, yeah. So, yeah off time, so you so. really that's awesome though. I mean, you're entrenched in the game. Yeah, like, totally. Sometimes literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. You really. I was at war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Rough. And did you? I mean, do you still play now? Then now. I don't play nearly as much. I don't have the kind of time. Right, right. But it is know, one of those games where it's, you, need you need a lot of time. And yeah, a ton yeah, of time. It's, yeah, you lose it. It's it's and it's, it's not tough. Like drumming. No, well, <laughs> that's tough too, but. Yeah, you know, it's and also with golf, like I have all this pride of what I used to be able to do, uh, and now that I don't play, I can't expect yeah. to do as well, but I do. But you expect, yeah. Expect That's it. what I feel about my life in yeah. general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's All these it's things I hard. just thought I could once do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so now how about for, uh, for, for money and whatnot? Did you, yeah. uh, I mean, did you? have make. to your parents were I mean you gotta go work you gotta yeah, yeah okay from a young age you gotta make your own okay yeah they were I wasn't really a camp person like I didn't want to be a counselor at a camp right. you know, or anything that's what a lot of friends of mine did you know, yeah. they, they had their camp they loved it and they didn't want to leave so they wanted to go be a counselor I was never really into it that much okay did you go to camp though? I did go right. to camp a little you're bit already, you're making the face I was, yeah I wasn't fan. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Um, I actually went to camp. I'm so bad Did they at say arts. They an all boys camp. Or? <laughs> no, okay. I might have liked that. But I, <laughs> that might have been that, fun. That might have been fun. But <laughs> no, actually, I, this is kind of funny. I'm so bad at art. Like, okay. so I can't draw. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Like, I really, I'm terrible. I actually made my parents seek out a camp that wouldn't make me do arts and crafts. Really? Yeah, no, swear to God, yeah. And, and they, they, had, they found, yeah, they, they I told they're very supportive. <laughs> yes, they're very yes, supportive. Yes. And, and they've also seen my artwork, so they understand, like, <laughs> we don't want best. our kids being made fun of all day. So. <laughs> nice. What kind of camp was it? So it would be a music camp oh, okay. or a sports camp or just, like, if there was arts, you could choose broadcasting or filming or something instead gotcha. of drawing, not, which I no could drawing. not do. That is a wild yeah, demand to come in with like a parent, you know. Yeah. And My she child did. will not draw. She will not like, draw. What, this, 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 from yeah. her childhood? Or what's that? It's <laughs> so bad. It was that bad. Though. Oh, my goodness. Bad, so, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So then you, okay, so you move yeah. on. You go to so, off to college and... Um, you at some point you have <laughs> mentioned in the past uh, a lottery uh, um, uh, addiction. Fetish? Yes, addiction. <laughs> Which is yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've simmered it down. You've but. simmered. Okay, <laughs> talk to us about the lottery. Well, you know you've you've got all this you got all this college debt that you know you're going to go into. And I and I've worked like I said I've worked my entire you know since age thirteen I've been uh, yeah. working. 
and uh, would be nice not to work. I don't know. So I figured, well, you know, here and there, I'm not going to go overboard. (laughs) But uh, so, so I'd buy, I'd even buy tickets with extra money that I'd make that was supposed to be used for food during my golf tournaments. (laughs) And that's terrible. So rather than eat. Rather than, well, yeah, you know, if I'd find a better priced meal, maybe I could (laughs) buy a dollar. (laughs) This sounds really bad. Can we edit No, (laughs) this is amazing. (laughs) No, it's terrible. No, you've made it. Look at you today. Look look at me today. Yes. Working. (laughs) A successful woman. It's still not on the lottery. No, but yeah, so... This one time, this is kind of funny, I opened my mailbox at school, in college, and there was a big brown envelope, and which never happens, so right. no one sends me mail. Yeah, you get mail at school, yeah. yeah. Now, we'll my grandmother you. would send me a postcard, and thank God. Right. Um, and then, so I bring out this envelope, and I open it up, and there's like over a hundred scratch-off lot of tickets. Ma- really? Yeah. Unscratched? Unscratched. In the mail to In you. the mail. I don't know if it was... I mean, it was in my mailbox. I didn't even look. I was just completely... Really? Yeah. Was it, like, mail that was sent somewhere? From it was, it was in, like, a manila envelope, and oh, it looked yeah. like... It looked, like, kind of inner office. I don't know. It was in a manila Oh, my envelope. God. This is your dream. Right. Totally. So, first, I'm looking. I'm like, oh, my God. This is amazing. I'm going to go run to my room and start scratching. Scratch and then, And then I realize I'm in a college, and they do research things, and maybe someone's filming me. What would you do? You're, like, a sociology You're project like or something? You're, like, the guinea pig of this thing. Yeah. How and so I start looking around like I'm crazy, like... <laughs> And then this person walks by who was a friend of mine, and they see that I've got mixed colors in my face, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> so they come up to me, and they say, is, are you okay? Right. Is everything okay? And I said, yeah, uh, but look at what I just got. And they looked at the envelope, and they're like, oh, my God, get out of here. Start scratching. Go, <laughs> go, run like the wind, you know? And I was like, I, and then I think to myself, okay, I can't do that, you know, these aren't, something's not right, right. there's no reason for someone to have given me over 100 scratch-off lotto tickets, (laughs) so I come to my senses, okay, I'm clutching this like it's, you know, my baby, okay, and at that point it could have been, right, (laughs) so, and I go over to the the guy that's the head of the mail, okay, and I'm clutching this, mind you, and I said, so, so what do you do, (laughs) so what do you do if you think you might have received mail that shouldn't have been sent to you. And he's looking at me, and he sees that I'm clutching this, right. this envelope, and he literally reaches through the mail window and grabs it from my arms oh my. and pulls it from me. And it was, you know, obviously felt violated. Yeah. And he says, oh, my God, you know, the uh, student activity fund has been looking for this for months. You know? Are you kidding me? No. Totally, I don't know how it ended up in my box, my mailbox, uh, in like, your mailbox. My, my mailbox. For and months? For months. I don't, I, it doesn't make any sense to me, no. but that's what he said. I remember it. And, like, the, like, the, I guess I went into, like, a depression. Yeah. <laughs> your retirement plan. I, I was, it was, it just was gone. out of ripped your arms, out of my literally. Arms. I mean, there and was. And your child, your baby. It's just my baby. <laughs> ripped out of my arms. That is the weirdest thing. The dingo thing. stole my the baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is yes. and the manner in which it was it all was, taken yeah. away from you and now <laughs> so violent <laughs> exactly ripped from ripped your from arms. arms and yes. so, so I, I I was dejected and I hurt but I think still it wasn't even so much that it was the call I made to my father after that right because you know they're the ones that ultimately instill me with this sort of you gotta do the right thing right. whatever it is you do the right thing so I, uh, I called him, or I called my parents. He happened to pick up the phone. He's like, what's wrong, you know? And I said, well, this is what happened. And I tell him the whole story, and I said, it's your fault. It's your fault for telling me and showing me right from wrong. It's your fault. And he says, uh, I thought I told you what's right from wrong, but I never taught you to be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> The parents strike again. Yeah, I mean, he he doesn't even remember that anymore. He's I like, you did the right thing. I'm like, but you didn't that's say not that. not what you said at the that's time. That's not what you said. Oh, I love it. Well, I tell you what, I'm putting your parents on the podcast next. You, that is, you should. Next time I'm back home, are they back east still? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh my goodness Get Grace. my mom on. I want to get your mom on that. I want to get on that lunch, uh, the line of yeah, your friends. Yeah, friends. Who Take lunch. a number. It's like the deli. <laughs> 
Well, I wasn't wrong. I thought having you on the show would be a ton of fun, and I my cheeks are hurting from <laughs> smiling as they always do when I'm around you. Do you feel like you were entertaining? Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to you. you know? month, yeah. And that's exactly it. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend Lauren, thank you for tuning in. Greetings from Somerville. Listen to us. Uh, you, can, you can follow us and rate and review on iTunes, please. You can listen to all my uh, comedy albums on Spotify and SiriusXM. We'll talk to you next time.